Hey, what is up you guys, welcome back. Today I want to make an updated tutorial video on how to flip for beginners, but not for beginners only. And you can consider this as a sequel on the previous video I made on this topic. That one is still good, still viable, but a lot of that information is getting old and um, the same ways I did it back then might not be the best ways to do it now. And that's why I need to make an updated video. The market changes all the time, so we need to adapt to overcome that kind of situation. If you don't know what flipping is, let me kind of give you a short explanation. It's basically buying skins on Steam, but you're buying them with the intent of selling them for a higher price. The logic is pretty simple, you just buy low, sell high, and you grow your inventory little by little, and the more you have, the more you can get, and it just snowballs like that. And the only way for you to get good at it is through someone explaining it to you and also putting it in practice. That's just the best way to learn about it. I'm going to structure the video in three parts and talk about each of them independently. First, we're gonna go over what it is like for beginners to flip right now, because the situation isn't very favorable for beginners currently. Secondly, we're gonna look at more pricey things and see how those things are doing currently. And third, we're gonna talk about alternatives, right? If you want to expand, if you want to grow your inventory larger, you have to consider alternatives, different ways of flipping on other marketplaces, in other games, because if you're doing only one thing, you're not as likely to succeed, or at least it might be very slow. Also, to kind of motivate people to start flipping, I'm gonna give away 20 euro split among 20 people. So everybody gets 1 euro, but that is going to be more than enough for you to start flipping. So if you wanna participate, just be subscribed, like the video, and comment down below your Discord tag. The comment is not gonna show up right away because I have to approve it, but it's gonna be there. I'm gonna give you about two weeks, so I'm going to choose the winners on September 1 and show them in the video after September 1, which is going to come next. The first thing that you're gonna need to know as a beginner is that you need access to the Steam community market, which is this. If you don't know how to access it, you basically go to the website, which is https.steamcommunity.com market. You can just copy it or go to the description, I'll leave it down there. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this in the browser and not in the Steam app, which is right here, it's because you don't have access to the URL, and that's going to be very important later on. Right here, you can see that I have access to the Steam community market. I have funds, it doesn't say any errors. But if you go to the market and it shows some yellow errors, then you're gonna need to do what those errors say. Because if you haven't made any purchases worth at least $5 in the last year on Steam, then you're not gonna have access to the market. Or if you don't have your mobile authenticator and stuff like that, then you're gonna need to do those things before you can actually do this in the first place. Okay, as I remember in the last version of this video, we were looking a lot at cheap items and finding a lot of good deals. Well, I checked that before making this video and it's unfortunately really hard to find anything good below 30, 40 cent. So let's look at the solution. If you only have a little amount of money on your Steam balance, then you're gonna have to look at Team Fortress. Just click on the game right here and it's gonna take you to the game. It's sorted all the items from this game and we're gonna click on the price to sort the items from low to high, right? Now I can see the URL right here and if you pay attention, it says P1, just put P1000. You do that and it's gonna take you straight away to 58 cent or about that. And you can either go down pages to decrease the price or you can go up in pages to increase the price. And here the way you're gonna search for items, it's pretty similar to what you were doing before. You're just going to find items that have a quantity of let's say 30, at least 30, up to maybe 200, 300, but you can still look at the items that have less or more than that. I would say it's not worth looking at items that have one quantity for sale, because that's that's just items that are never going to come your way. See, this one last time it sold, it was December 22 last year. Uh, so yeah, that's why you don't look at these things. Instead though, you're gonna pay attention to these things. And this one, for example, if you look at the weekly graph, this is how many times it's sold in one week. That's a decent amount. Meaning you can probably flip this item for a profit once or twice a day. This one is actually looking pretty good. You can see that there are six orders to buy for 43. And if you look at the sale, they're selling for the least amount 58 cent. There is a gap of about 15 cent. But you also have to consider the graph. You have to look, does it actually sell for that price? And that price is 58. 
Mm, no, no, it doesn't. But it still sells for 53, which is decent enough. And now let me quickly introduce a new factor, which is called the Steam tax. Yes, for every sale, Steam takes a tax. That's about 15%. And if you just need to calculate the tax, you go to your inventory, you find any item that you have in your inventory just lying around, like a graffiti that's worth three cents, you click sell, and let's say you want it to sell for 53 cents. You put 53, and it's gonna tell you right here, it, you're gonna get 47 cents. Meaning that if I sell this item for 53, I'm going to get back 47. And if I bought it for 43, you do quick maths, you get four cent profit. That's it. And that's a pretty good number in my opinion. You should really think of it in percentages. It's about 10% of your initial investment of 43 cent. So you gain 4 cent after finalizing the sale. And you can continue looking like that and we're gonna do that and find a few more good items. But the idea behind me showing you this is not for you to actually go and try to purchase this item. I mean, you can do that if you're early to the video, but all the people that are gonna come afterwards, they're not gonna be able to go for it because uh, too many people are gonna go for it, right? So you need to do it yourself. Don't go to the page 1000 like I did. Go to page 1200, go to page 800 and do the same thing. Somewhere where you're gonna have items all to yourself. Find items that people aren't paying as much attention to and you're always going to find profitable ones. For example, let's go to the next page and as you go, you open the items that you think might be profitable and then you look at them. Look at that. What? I'm actually a bit surprised. By default, this is the graph of one month. You see, this is July, this is August. This is how many sales are happening every single day. There's multiple sales every hour, and you can see that it fluctuates between 51 and 43, something like that. Let's look at the buy orders. You can easily score a buy order for 43, even for 42. And then you're gonna be able to sell it for 51. And as you remember, our little trick, we go to the calculator, we input 51, we get 45. But we bought it for 42 or 43. And I get it, right? It's two cent profit, but you sell it like 10 times per day. That's really good. That's already turning into 20 cent and you get another 40 cent and you can basically flip two items at the same time. You don't have to flip one only. So that's pretty cool. The other item I opened, this one, it also has quite big fluctuations. It's not being sold as frequently as the previous one we looked at, but it's still pretty good. This one, I can easily score a buy order for 46, it looks like, and it does actually get sold for 46, that's good. And does it sell for 58, 56, something like that? Yes, it does. Okay, so let's say I buy it for 46 and sell it for 56, just because there is 57 already, a lot of people selling for that. So let's try to sell for 56, we get 49, that's three cent profit. It's not as great as the previous one, but it's decent, I think, it's really decent. I scrolled a couple more pages and I stumbled upon this item. It has a very weird graph, I would say, it goes super low and super high at the same time. Um, so let's see, this one, we could try and buy it for 49, let's say I wanna be competitive, and then sell it for 57, because it actually sells for that. So let's go in here, put 57, it goes for 50, that would mean we get only one cent profit. And situationally, you're gonna have items like this, which only yield 1% profit. Uh, generally, you should not go for that, because it costs a lot of money and it's not a lot of profit. And if, let's say, the item goes down in price, you're gonna have to sell it for a loss if the profit was only one cent. While the other items, even if they go down in price, you can still sell them to break even, you don't lose anything that way. So you need to have a higher profit margin just in case the price falls. That's always good to know. And if you have a lot of items for sale, you have to continuously check on them and see how they are doing. If they are continuously falling down in price, then you should consider selling it before it's too late and you start losing money on that item. But sometimes, even if you're already losing money on that item, it's worth selling just so you can rebuy the same item cheaper or just buy another item and flip that one, make profit with that one and continue like that. Okay, one final item before we move to the next section of the video. This one looks pretty goddamn good. You can try and get it for 40. It doesn't drop that often at that price, maybe 41, try it. And once a week or more than that, you're gonna get it for that price. And the good thing is that you can then sell it for almost 50. Look at that. 
let's say I want to actually sell it for 50, you get 44 after tax, but you bought it for 40. So that's another 4 cent, which is 10%. That's really good. Okay, that was about it for the first part of the video. I showed you how to search for items that are pretty cheap. They're under $1. So if you, let's say, win the giveaway, then you can start flipping those items. If you have CSGO and you have Prime in CSGO, then you can get drops in-game, sell them, and build yourself up to a decent amount, just selling these fracture cases, Prisma cases, stuff like that, and start flipping. Alternatively, you can go to your inventory, click on the Steam right here, and you're gonna find cards, which you probably have from games you have purchased, and you can sell these cards for a small amount, but they add up quite good. And uh, if you sell 100 of them, that's enough for you to start. Okay, now let's take a look at how flipping is for more expensive items. This is going to be helpful for people that have already gotten some experience with flipping, because I really think that you shouldn't start flipping with high amounts of money because then your inexperience may lead you to lose more than you're prepared to lose. It's always good to get experience with a little amount of money. And also this part of the video is going to show people that are just starting out what they can do in the future. First you're gonna notice that I have a lot of these CSGO stickers that cost quite a bit of money. And the thing about these things is that generally they are really profitable, but not at this time of the year. CSGO has been losing a lot of players and selling these things has been harder than ever. I'm still able to sell a few of them, I'm in profit with them, but it's currently not as good as I would have liked. So I'm paying more attention to other kind of things. Now we're gonna go to CSGO, click on sort the price again and go to something like page 1300. You're gonna notice that we are at a much higher price range, but that's where I found that it's pretty good to flip. And I'm generally looking at items that have at least 10, 15 is better, 20 is really good. And then you just open up these things and you take a look at them. Because generally, there's not that many people looking at them. And that's kind of where you are going to profit. For example, this thing right here, the hand drops duct tape. You can get it for about 61.90 and then sell it for 73, you get two euros profit that way. And that's going to be about 3% increase on your initial investment of 62 euros. That's pretty good. Sometimes you're gonna stumble on items like this one. It looks like it has a big gap between buyer and sellers, which is insane for this amount of money. That's going to be like five euros profit. That's a lot. But you're gonna have to consider that even though it sells quite frequently, it's very risky. When you click on the lifetime, you're gonna notice that ever since this item appeared, it's only been falling in price, just because it, it hasn't been even one year since it did. And the, once the new operation comes this winter or autumn, whatever, then this item is gonna drop even lower. And if you don't manage to sell it by that point, you're gonna lose a lot of money. So that's why this kind of item is very risky to go for. It has only been recently added into the game and I would normally not go for something like this, even though it can be profitable. Okay, here's another one. Got knife stain field tested. It's quite a nice knife. You get it for about 62. Sell it for 75. You profit 3 euros. You check if it actually sells for those numbers. Yes, it does. And uh, generally, the lifetime, it has been in the game for a long time. And it is actually growing in price. So even if you don't manage to sell it for a profit right away, eventually it will catch up and... Uh, make you profit that way. That's kind of a neat thing about these kind of items because they go up in price, so you're pretty safe going and buying them. Normally, you don't have to go for items only at this price range. You can find good ones at about 5 euros, 20 euros in that price range. But honestly, I found that lately it's been easier to flip these kind of items, more expensive ones than the cheap ones. It's just all around not as profitable as it used to be for those items. But this one stayed pretty much as profitable as they've always been. For example, right here in my history of sales, you can see a few items that I flipped that way. And here, for example, is another one. I flipped a Star Trek print stream, and that was pretty cool. So yeah, you can find good ones if you're looking for them. But you have to keep in mind that doing one thing forever and expecting it to get better is not gonna work. You're gonna have to always improvise and look for new ways. And that's kind of exactly why I started flipping skins on a third-party website, which in my case is Skinboard. And I actually found it to be much more profitable than any of the other ways I'm flipping, at least at this time. Maybe that'll change in the future, but at least now that's the best method I'm doing. For example, these gloves I have right here in my CSGO inventory, they are part of that Skinboard flipping Thing I'm doing and I actually have a video on that which I made a few weeks 
weeks ago. Well, yeah, in that video, I went over pretty much all the details that there are and it turned out as a neat little tutorial. All right, now back to Steam and let's talk about one more thing that is quite profitable to do and that would be Rust. Rust has a seven day cooldown, meaning if you buy items on the market, you're gonna have to wait seven days to sell them again. And the presence of that just filters out a lot of competition. And that's why Rust is quite good. Also, Rust is a pretty cool game and the developers haven't forgotten about it, meaning it constantly gets updates, new players, and is just all around in a good place for its economy. I found that in Rust, you can find good items no matter the price range. You can find them at the cheapest amounts and you can also find them at the highest amounts. Okay, let's just start at about page 150 just because there are not as many pages here as in other games and just take a look at random items that we can click on. First item that we found, we can see that the highest buy order is 184, the lowest sell order is 233. We check the graph and we see that it actually sells for both those numbers. It doesn't sell maybe as often as we would have liked, maybe once a week, which kind of sucks, but it allows for a great amount of profit. If you calculate how much you get after selling for 230, you get about two euros, which is 16 cent profit. That's pretty good, that's almost 10%. You can continue looking at low end skins or you can even climb at 20, 30 euros and find good items there. For example, this one, you can sell it for about 20 euros. That's pretty good. Buy it for 16, that's about one euro profit. And if you pay attention, you're gonna notice that this item is climbing in price. And despite the fact that it's currently at 20, I believe that in about one week, it might even climb beyond that but who knows, but even if it doesn't, even if it falls a bit in price, you're still gonna be in profit because the profit margin is one euro and that's pretty good. For example, this thing, you can calculate the profit yourself, that's pretty good deal right there and uh, it does that all the time, which is pretty cool. But I think there is really no point in going and looking at every single one of them. You can do that yourself, you can find good ones, if you're into flipping, then, well, you got a lot to play with. The cool thing about Rust flipping or just flipping in general is that you can do it as often as you want. You don't have to do it the whole day and not have a job. People often use an argument that they would rather get a job. Well, go and get one. Nobody is stopping you. Flipping is meant to do in your free time. When, for example, you're traveling to your job by bus or you just have nothing better to do and you want to watch a Netflix series and flip at the same time, that's also a good idea. Or maybe you're taking a dump and you you want to flip during that. That's, that's fine as well. And also you can even do this if you're 12 years old and you have like a little bit of funds available in your Steam account. You don't really have anything to lose, I would say. <laughs> Plus, when you get to, I don't know, 18 years old, you're gonna have a good amount of skins that you can cash out and buy yourself maybe even a car, I don't know. And actually talking about a car, that's what I would do in about one year after flipping a bunch more. Cashing out some of the profit, I will buy a car and I made basically a series out of it. Only two episodes so far. The episodes don't come out regularly, just when I feel like I have something important to share. And in those episodes, I will update you on the progress, how much profit I got from what flipping method, what mistakes I've done, what I've learned, and all that kind of goes in and helps you on your own journey, I think at least. And it's just a good way to put and practice the things that I do and say in my videos. Because anyone could just make videos about a thing and just say they're really good at it. But you actually have to show results in order for them to mean anything. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, join the giveaway which I announced at the beginning of the video, in case you didn't. And come hang out on our Discord server. I'm gonna leave the link down in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos. Like the video because that helps my channel grow a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.